Pete. I'm good. How about you? I am fine. Peter Clayton's behind the camera. I'm Jeremy Cordo. Welcome to the Court of Public Opinion. Uh, it is a, a red letter day in a sense because uh, it's my youngest boy's birthday. Christa Bubbles, as we called him. Christa Bubbles. Well, it's not his official name, you understand. It's Christopher, named after my brother. And uh, he was born... Uh, what did Caroline say? Um, Christa Bubbles, the Magnificent's birthday. <laughs> I was going to say he was born about midnight. Uh, I wish children could be born at, you know, a predictable, civilised time. You know, you know what I Race, be racing off to hospital. Although Adelaide's kind of nice because where we are up at Glen Osmond, it's only a just a quick drive down a couple of roads and you're at the Burnside Hospital. Everything is very close, very nice, very convenient. It's a very good place to live. In case somebody hasn't told you that, Adelaide, very nice place to live. Um, I do not hanker for the big smoke. This is just right for me. Uh, June the 23rd, 1974, the first extraterrestrial message is sent from Earth into space. God knows if anyone received it, or perhaps it's still rattling around out there somewhere. Uh, talking to you yesterday about um, Chris Christopherson and Johnny Cash. It's June Carter Cash's birthday today. American Grammy Award winning country singer. The Carter family. The Johnny Cash show. She wrote Ring of Fire, which was a very good song. Big hit for Johnny Cash. Actress. She was born in Mesa Spring, Virginia. She died in 2003 was born in 1929. Good life, well lived. Good life, well lived. Um, Harriet. Harriet, 2006. The Galapagos turtle, or tortoise. Are they tortoises or turtles? The really big ones, I mean. I think they're turtles. Yeah. Anyway, she died. She was born in 1830, and she lived to 2006. She was aged 176 years old. Just goes to show you that if you move very slowly, <laughs> and you've got a hard shell, you'll live longer. <laughs> Dear Harriet. Dear Harriet, Alan Turing, the British mathematician, computer scientist, the um, guy who cracked the Enigma code and was hounded to death because he was a homosexual. He was born in uh, London, died in 1954, but born in 1912. Same year my mother was born. 2018, 12 boys and their coach Oh yeah, these are the kids that got stuck in the cave in Thailand. Uh, monsoon flooding trapped the young people. Rescue efforts that were recognised around the world. Uh, they got them out. In fact, the, the, the doctor that got them out was an Adelaide guy, an anaesthetist from Adelaide. He was very fundamental. He was one of these sort of uh, cave exploring people. He did that for a hobby. He knew a lot about helping people in a situation like this. And uh, I don't know if he ever got a, a medal or a Order of Australia or something, but he should have. That was in uh, 2018. They made a movie. In fact, Christopher, my son, worked on the special effects for that movie about the rescue of those kids in the cave in Thailand. He's in the credits. Very proud of him. Very good. Mazda becomes the first Japanese car to capture the Le Mans 24-hour race in 1991. Never knew Mazda did that. Never knew that. How the QWERTY keyboard was born. Christopher Latham Scholes patents the Scholes and Gideon typewriter. 
the first commercially successful typewriter with the keyboard that we know and recognize today. And that was in 1868. 1868. Uh, rocker Alice Cooper falls off the stage in Vancouver. <laughs> he breaks eight ribs. <laughs> no, six ribs, I'm sorry. Uh, 1975. I walked into the open door of the dishwasher in the kitchen two nights ago, and I have broken three ribs. And it's all right unless you sneeze. Or you cough. Or breathe. Oh, breathing's not good, no. Or laugh, you. <laughs> it, it hurts. Anyway, you live and learn. What doesn't kill you, ladies and gentlemen, makes you stronger. True. Jonas Salk, American medical researcher and virologist who created the polio vaccine. He dies of a heart attack at the age of 80. And that was in 1995. He was, can you imagine how many lives that man saved over the years? Wonderful man, Jonas Salk, the Salk vaccine. Wiley Post and Harold Caddy take off on a flight around the world on this day in 1931. Uh, Claude Monet's Water Lilies sold at auction for $54 million. How could a bit of paint on a piece of canvas be worth $50? do not make me laugh. $54 million, I ask you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, oh, uh, uh, and, and one that sort of makes most men's eyes water. Uh, 1993, Lorena Bobbitt. You remember Lorena? <laughs> It's one you won't forget. Right? Well, that's right. I mean, she brought the expression bobbit, turned it from a, a noun into a, a verb or an adjective. A, a verb, yeah. Yes. Bobbitted the poor old bloke. His name was John Wayne Bobbitt. I won't go into the details, but I'm sure you um, remember the story. Oh, oh, hang on, that's an interesting one. The world's oldest parliament. Where do you reckon that would be, Pete? Greece. What? England? No. Rome. Rome. No, not Rome. Not Greece. I would have thought <sighs> maybe Greece. Um, 930 was the year, and this was the day the world's oldest parliament, the Icelandic parliament, is established. Goodness me, Iceland. I didn't know that. I sit here, talk to you and learn all sorts of interesting things. And thank you to all the people who comment on the stuff we do. And I do my best to keep up with everything and make sure I answer. Uh, Jill sent me something which I, I have to reply to. She picked me up on something I said the other day when I was discussing... Uh, the Brittany Higgins payout, uh, I wrongly attributed that to Scott Morrison, uh, and that wasn't right. Uh, it was the Labour government, it was signed off on by Mark Dreyfus, uh, the Attorney General, who I think is the only person who has the authority to sign off on significant claims against the Commonwealth. So that's how Brittany got her three million bucks, not from the Coalition, but got it from Labour. Thank you, Jill. I appreciate that. You see, what I like about talking to you, and I loved it in radio, and I love it here, is that you are what I call the encyclopedia. You know everything. There's somebody out there who knows everything about everything. Not necessarily the same person, you understand, but the wealth of knowledge is truly impressive. It's interesting to compare the difference. I was thinking the other day, the difference in the way Philip Lowe, head of the Reserve Bank of Australia, and Jerome Powell, head of the Fed in the United States, are regarded over a very similar strategy in trying to control inflation. 
Now, Governor Lowe tries to explain, cajole, persuade, argue about the interest rates, I mean. Mr. Powell says, I, I think this is probably pretty close, but don't, don't, it's not exactly verbatim, but getting inflation down is not the most important thing, it is the only thing. My total priority is to bring inflation down to under 2%, and I will not stop lifting interest rates until we get there. Now this guy's got a job to do, and he's doing it. Both these guys have got jobs to do. Now for doing his job, Philip Lowe becomes the public whipping boy in fear of losing his job. While Jerome Powell is the local hero. Regardless of the politics, the media or the critics, both men are absolutely right. It is us, we the people, who should applaud the efforts of both these men to save our economy. But the media doesn't give much support. Very, very concerning crime statistics. I don't know if you've seen much of it. It hasn't been given a lot of publicity, and I suppose I understand why. Aggravated home invasions carried out by kids is up 30%. This is in one year. Crime generally a growing problem, but particularly crime which involves kids between the ages of 10 and 15. 10 and 15. This statistic is up 83%. 83% in one year. What are we doing? Pretty close to looking the other way, I would say. You can't possibly get away with having crime statistics, figures like that. As I say, not that they've been given a lot of publicity, but they should have been. Um, I don't know if you get these um, things in the mail, the bowel cancer kit. They don't send them to me because I think I'm too old. Uh, everyone gets one from the age of 50, I think, to 76. Uh, but this is the disturbing bit. It's only two people out of every five who take advantage of that test. Now, it may be a great idea, but it seems like a terribly wasteful way of doing things. And then they spend, apart from distributing the kit, there's a huge amount of money they spend on advertising. You know, I, 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 I'd do the campaign for them. I'd just say, if you get this in the mail, don't sit on it. Oh, I'm sorry, do sit on it. I forget it. You've got to get people's attention, I think. Top marks of the government for saying no and acting quickly to pass a law to prevent the Russians from building their embassy on the land right next door to Parliament House in Canberra. They're existing embassy, the Russians, positively bristles with high-tech intelligence gathering antenna. And you really wouldn't want that between Parliament House and the Telstra Tower, which is exactly what you'd get if they built on that block of land. And speaking of the Russians, I see that they have banned, and I think I'd probably agree with it, I'd want to know more about it, but I see they have banned all gender reassignment surgery. Interesting. Uh, we did the thing last week, I think, the, the things that failed, glorious failures, uh, the things that never caught on. But what about the things that unfortunately did? catch on. 
Some of them more a flash in the pan, I suppose. Some of them didn't really stay long. And some of them, of course, are still with us. But they all have something in common. It could be, you know, that we as humans need a fad or two, a craze. Don't know. Um, the limbo, Rubik's Cube, the miniskirt. I mean, some of it's fashion, rock and roll, climate change, the yo yo, the hula hoop. It could be a product, the pill, hmm? yep. It could be a product, a fashion, or a syndrome. Ah, yes, the syndromes. Chronic fatigue syndrome came right out of the blue, as did a repetition strain injury. Women's lib, all this LGBTIQ stuff, transgender people, all, let me see, uh, 1,264 of them in Australia, according to the last census, You'd swear there were millions if you listened to the media. Whatever happened to salt damp? Now, when I came to Adelaide in the 70s and into the 80s, salt damp was a huge thing in Australia. Well, in South Australia particularly, the salt was coming up from the ground and eating away the bricks and the masonry. A bit like repetition strain injury. Disappeared. Gone. And don't forget southern in, sudden infant death syndrome. Hmm. Uh, Brexit. Ah, oh, Brexit. Brexit would destroy the UK. Far from it. All these things seem to come and they go. One day, almost an epidemic. The next not mentioned much at all. COVID comes to mind. And we never question what manipulation there is behind all these things. Postnatal depression. Well, there was a thing that was rattling around years ago called, called, called the baby blues. No big deal, baby blues. In the media, the organ grinder, well, maybe, maybe the media is the organ grinder and we're the monkey. Where does it all come from? I can understand some products, but I can't understand the syndromes and the culture stuff, the phony science, messing with our heads, distorting our lives and costing us a fortune, fantasy or fraud. But I reckon the one that takes the cake is climate change. Climate change. Let me guess you've never heard anyone say anything like this before. Most people wouldn't dare. People in the media are totally intimidated. They seem to amplify and not investigate. What could be at least exaggeration if not perhaps total fraud, needs a bit of investigation. The emperor has no clothes story. You know, no one would tell him. No one would dare tell him. He was standing there stark naked. But the really big con, if you think back, it rivals climate change, come to think of it. Do you remember Y2K? Y2K, Pete, do you remember that? Y2K, the millennium bug. The world would stop, computers would blow, aircraft would fall out of the sky, time would stand still, the world as we knew it would end. Midnight, the 30th of December, 1999. It didn't. Nothing. However, no apologies. Then they bring on climate change. The world spent billions on that Y2K nonsense. And I guess we'll do the same with climate change. Why not? 
Once a schmuck, always a schmuck. The UN chief, Antonio Cataris. Antonio Cataris. He says, and I'll quote, I think it's, I think I remember his words, the world is screaming towards a catastrophe with its eyes wide open. Climate change, of course, he was talking about. Y2K, all over again. This is a little socialist with an agenda, this Antonio fella. I hate to do the work of you journalists, but Antonio, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Where's your proof? Where's your evidence? Where is your science? But of course the journalists, no, no, they just simply record what he says and move on. Hmm. These days, it's a bit sensitive, but I'm quite sure that in the future we will look back on this thing called climate change and regard it in the same way, the same manner as Y2K. It's very embarrassing. But of course the climate is changing. It always has. We're coming out of an ice age. Of course it's getting warmer. This is nature. Our great strength is that we evolve. We adapt. Australia has gone from tropical rainforests to desert. In London they used to grow pineapples. And what part did humankind play in all of that? Pretty much nothing. Nature. Climate change. We adapt. That's how it works. But a lot of people don't want to talk about that. Spoils the narrative. You'll never hear a story like this on the ABC. I can tell you that. <laughs> Thanks so much for viewing the Court of Public Opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jeremy Cordo. Believe in yourself. We'll talk uh, Monday. Bye for now. Have a good weekend.